Yo, what up? It's Roger from the Masquerade <laughs> Podcast. We did the first. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more interviews with your favorite emerging artists. Today we have one that's been a long time coming. We got Lil Lotus. Hello. Live. Live. This is a night episode. Yeah, it's it's uh, ten nineteen. First question. Yes. Did you knit that sweater yourself, and did you run out of thread as you were making it? I answered it when you asked it. <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> yes, you did knit it yourself. I did. I can see your entire forearm and your nipple. How much was that sweater? Like two thousand dollars? No, it's a trip sweater. I just tore it up. What does that mean, trip? Trip, like trip pants. Oh, like, yeah, wow. it, but it's a sweater. And they're still making stuff. I mean, if you go to, I don't know anything about them. By the I way, I mean, there's a trip store that's like really big. Oh, I think pretty sure it's in New York. I don't they know do exactly. like the buckles New York. on the pants and the zippers and shit. Yeah, but there's one uh, that that poser store. I pooped myself in that store. Actually, yes, in the you poser did. Store. You did shit yourself in the store. That's yes. a fact. Well, this shit is pants. Um, that's where that joke came from. <laughs> it's is not that, a joke. It's a real. Story. Oh right, because now it's a meme because everyone knows. Yeah. If that's a problem, so fun fact that no one knows, I managed you for like three years. Long time. Like up until recently. I feel like it was longer than three years. Yeah, it might have been. We, or maybe I was just losing track of time because I was <laughs> off the shit. <laughs> you were off the shits for a primary, primarily a large <laughs> chunk of it. But it was somewhere around three years. We will get into that later. But. So I forget what's public information and what's not. We were supposed to do this podcast for a while, and it was always like, well, let's wait for an album, or well... We were waiting for a, something. Yeah. Something cool to happen. And now you have an album. I I worked on the start of this album with you. I don't Pretty much all the way. Yeah, sort of, but there's some new songs on it. There are some new songs, yeah. but yeah, you took it to the finish line pretty much. Ooh, you have a signed <laughs> vinyl coming. Oh yeah, it's on the way. It's it's in the Uber on the I way. Don't know where uh, I don't know. Yeah, shout out to Eleanor. Um, but anyway, we're gonna get into all of that. I want to take it back. You've yes. done interviews before, but not yeah. too many. You've done like a podcast or two. Remember when I did the text one with you? We had to delete yeah. it because I was so fucked up. <laughs> this is also another great story that I, <laughs> I used to have a series called In the DMs. It was pre-podcast when I was like, I didn't want to show my face. It was pre me having. Oh a yeah, label. you weren't even on it. No, and you just asked all questions. it was was like it was like your fans asking questions. It was before Instagram stories would like let you put up a question. They kind yeah. of stole my whole shit. Uh, and y I filmed it in my old house. You were fucked up. You were with one of your many ex girlfriends. <laughs> she was on camera, and a combination yeah. of all those things. Remember were the like, tattoos? <laughs> the tattoos are on camera. Remember you're oh. like, did y'all really get? each other's names tattooed and then we were like she's like oh fuck are you gonna make me take this podcast down for even referencing this no okay we're all, all my me and all my exes are cool <laughs> for some reason i don't believe that but no we, we are no it. i've literally all of them asked wow. them. well love y'all <laughs> if you're cool i would love to dig into some of these i um, literally was on the phone with i had a front row today. seat to all these relationships you would call me every other day and be like yo Fuck. we just broke up yo and then the next day yo it. we're married yeah, and then yeah. The next day it was like, <laughs> she fucking gave me the ring back it's over i'm not talking to her and then like 30 minutes later yeah. dude she's moving in with me i have a type you, know, uh, you definitely have a type uh, <laughs> but anyway you're from dallas, dallas texas. texas yes Jinx. how old are you now yeah should we kiss <laughs> i'm 27 now you're not 27. I'm 27. Holy shit. You like just turned 27. Uh, March. Wow, that's crazy. What do you think I was? I don't know. I figured you're still like 25 or something. It's <laughs> because of the way I act. Yeah. <laughs> you will always be 17 to me. <laughs> the be a first little day baby. I met you. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually, now that I think about it, we literally haven't actually seen each other in real life in like a year and a half. It yeah. was pre -COVID. Quarantine fucking sucks. Yeah. We were on Zooms every week together with your no, label. Wait, no, during quarantine, I think I came over here a few times, but it was just very like we just oh, went and left right. because like there was nothing we could go do. Right, buy. we couldn't go to any stores, yeah. any restaurants. Uh, remember the time we went to that restaurant down the street? <laughs> we have to <laughs> wait. Hold on. There's so many good stories, but let's do a quick okay, refresher. Yeah. You're from Dallas, Texas, as the story goes. Uh huh. You were playing in your church band, which I is was. a real curveball. 
Yeah, I really look like the church type. <laughs> I don't know. You kind of do. Some like new age. I look like the church type. Where like they serve popcorn and like <laughs> the fucking dude is church. like, who's going to Coachella <laughs> next like, weekend? Let's, up, let's rage. There's so many of those like, churches in this neighborhood, by the way. Just drop a bump in the communion basket. <laughs> yeah, not, not those kind of <laughs> churches, but there's like the cool pastor kind of churches. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the church I came from. <laughs> in dra- it was yeah. like a mega church. Yeah, like they would do like this thing where it's like the main like service was like at a, at a big big one. Yeah, and then oh shit, yeah, I did yeah, it. yeah. There the we go. main church was like at a big big one, big like church. A, yeah, like a huge. Yeah, they seated like so many fucking people. What are you saying, like five thousand people? Probably, more. yeah. Wow. And Crazy. then they had like a whole other wing of the church where it was like all the youth. And then that one was like fuck ton of kids. And uh-huh. then they had like the daycare area was a fuck ton of kids. And so it was just like it was really crazy, but um, yeah, they, they did that, and then they would like project the original service onto wow. screens at all the other smaller services, which it really just sounds like crazy as propaganda. And that's I what bet. I like to call religion. You're and like so, you're like almost like you're watching a sporting event. Yeah. I'm sure the fucking dude. the priest or pastor or whatever is just shouting on stage. Oh yeah, he, he must was, be he screaming was, he was nuts. <laughs> It is not so. And, Have uh, but, you ever seen but King love, of the Hill? Yes. This is my only point of reference to Texas, and there is an episode about uh, it. Ar- Arlington? Yes. There's an episode about the mega church because they try out the new church, and uh-huh. it's a mega church, and that's what I'm picturing in my head. Oh, yeah. You're it's, actually explaining just how they had yeah, it's like crazy. a daycare center. There's it's like crazy. this, there's that. Like real ass Bible belt bullshit. Uh. So basically, like, yeah, I, I did that. And I started off like just like playing instruments and shit like that and I, I was like my dad like taught me how to play like guitar like just a few chords me and my brother like picked it up we already we were like singing since we were like four and then like um yeah once we started like writing our own songs it just turned into like oh i want an electric guitar i want a mm-hmm. new guitar like a better guitar not like the hand-me-down guitar right. that you gave us and so then um we found this little loophole where our parents were like Oh, if you play for the oh, church, we'll get you the guitar you want because you need it to play on stage at church. Right. And our parents are very proud of their kids being on stage at church. Yeah, I bet. It. And so, um, yeah, we did that. And then after a while, it just turned into like, fuck this. Like, how, for me, it How into like that. old were you when you were like, fuck this? Well, it was more like, because like after my dad died, I was just like, I don't really have to go anymore. Like, right. <laughs> that's how right. I felt. I like ran away for like two years and I just like played in like metal bands wait, and wait, lived wait, out. Wait, of- wait, wait, wait! You're really just speeding through some. You insane- knew this. I oh, know oh, this. They, oh yeah, they don't know this. Okay, so, so here's what we're doing. We are <laughs> yeah, recording yeah. a podcast right now. We're, <laughs> right, we're, yeah, we're, we are both having a conversation for us yes. and for an audience. Yes. Also, okay. there's something jingling. You. So I was going I to church. Yes. And then I was doing that whole shebang. And then, and then you stopped liking da- it. Be- I'd never liked it. Right. I've never ever fucking liked religion, shit, all that shit. But I always was did like, you enjoy being on stage and people cheering? For yeah, because that where well, like it wasn't that was it wasn't the from? cheering. It was just like the performing part of it. Like just like it's just like I've always felt like really good on stage. Like I just like being like just like singing and performing and interpreting music. I guess mm. live was always like really fun for me. Like more than just like sitting in like it was always fun for me like sitting in my room but it was like like making music creating live music working with playing with other artists right. together live and like you're hearing it back you're just like yeah this is this is sick and like what kind of songs are you playing like mary had a little lamb or? no <laughs> it was like like if you know what hill song united it's like this like christian like that kind of cool christian like band i type shit. don't i know all the songs from like I'm a, well, I don't know if I am, but I was raised Catholic. Really? Yeah. Damn. So you and did the whole like. I would go to church. So I like know all the hymns. Yeah. Like. Yeah. We, we, did, we, we, did, we got to not show yeah. me do this. They on camera because I feel bad. <laughs> but I know all like the hymns and stuff. So I actually, when I moved to LA, I fucking popped into a church. I, you know, I don't know why, but it's like the same thing everywhere. And I was like, oh, I know all these hymns in my head, but I don't know. The yeah. mega church rock ballads. I mean, there were like sometimes that there would be like, oh, let's play this hymn. Right. But a lot of it was like majority like cool kid 
Christian music. But basically, like, I was doing that for a long time. And then my dad passed away. And I was never really, like, a big, like, fan of church. And my family kind of, like, dispersed. You know, like, we How just, did like, your dad pass away? My dad was, like, a really bad addict. And it just got to the point to where he was just like, I don't care anymore. I'm going to kill myself. And I was like, didn't really believe him. Didn't really. Oh, he vocalized that to you. Yeah. How old were you? I was, uh, I was 17 when he died. I want to say I was 17 when he told, well, yeah, I had to have been 17 when he told me because he told me like a week before he did it. And then, um, then he like ended up in the hospital. He was on machines for five days. And then, um, I just decided that we should pull the plug. Cause he was just you like, made that choice Yeah the whole family was kind of like No like he's still fighting And my dad would always tell me like yo If you're if I'm ever on machines and I get better I'm gonna f- beat the fuck out of you Like right. don't ever let me be on machines right. So I was like okay well like I won't And so I was like yo dad you're like on machines It was like me and him like I like held his hand And he like squeezed my hand Like a certain, I was like squeezing my hand this many times Wow really yeah. So then pulled the plug and then just fucking full fucking Kicked it in my arms and we're all there and just <laughs> yeah so that's what happened so then i like our family kind of like like it was like a, it wasn't necessarily like just we were all grieving right. you know like we we're all like trying in to your out. own separate ways yeah like so we weren't even able to be like there for each other and so i just took off and i was just playing with like a bunch of the homies that were like in metalcore bands and like just doing that and i was because sleeping pre, in my car pre that what was your high school experience like? Were you going to class and studying? Or? I've always just been a shithead in school. Okay. Like I was always like skipping school and I got kicked out for like drugs and stuff and went had to go to my home school and was in jail and stuff. Like just very dumb shit. What did you go to jail for for the first time and how old were you? Uh, aggravated pl- assault on a police officer. You're so sick. <laughs> 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 aggravated saw the police officer how yeah. old were you when you did that bro uh, you got some fucking street I was cred just on about to, i was about to turn 18 <laughs> that's so funny oh know. so it was after it was after your father passed away. yeah and it was all like really close to get like this all was like so compacted mm-hmm. like that it was like you could tell it was all like stemming from like of course the like oh fuck like what the fuck like i right. just went like berserk it felt like and so I like I pretty sh- like there were times where I like wouldn't be home for like like when I say that I like, ran away like there were times where I would like go home for like a week and like well, not a week but like for like a few days and I'd be like hey mom my mom's like where the fuck have you been like I've been trying to call you like I don't know if you're alive I don't know if you're like if everything's good like what's going on but yeah like you could tell it was all like stemmed from that weird compacted time of just like I mean bullshit. it's uh, and absolutely one of the most powerful and insane things to deal with yeah is not only losing a parent but being that young and essentially making yeah. a choice yeah you have like no idea like because you're just like oh like i'm 18 right or i'm about to turn 18 like i'm an adult like yeah yeah but then right. you're just like my adult is gone also, <laughs> how do i be an yeah, adult <laughs> yeah i still i'm like pretty damn old I'm you still like call your parents you're like absolutely, hey absolutely yeah. like mom i feel I, that i have to schedule an appointment with the fucking doctor and, and i don't know which one to pick and you help yeah me. like i still <laughs> i like still call my parents all the yeah. time uh what did the aggravated assault of a police officer was it just they were trying to arrest you and you resisted and like swung and hit somebody or what happened <laughs> it was bad it was stupid and really bad um so you know how you can like wrap like cherry bombs and shit with duct tape and throw them into cars and shit or not throw, <laughs> sorry, throw them at shit sure so like <laughs> and it makes them like blah bigger and shit like that we took like a bunch of like i had bought this bmx bike this guy was like yo i got a bunch of fireworks if you want them with this bmx bike i can't even fucking ride bmx i just like i wanted to learn so i get everything and i'm hanging out with my friends i'm supposed to be at like prom with like my girlfriend at the time i never showed up um and i went to this party and then i was like yo like i got a bunch of fireworks in my bag in my, my car, I was like, we should go pick up our homies and, like, throw fireworks at all of our homies <laughs> as they, like, come in the car. So we would, like, pull out, like, chains of, like, red devils or, like, black cats and mm-hmm. like, throw them out. And so, like, this one, this, at this one point, we saw, like, three, like, cement trucks. 
And I thought it'd be a cool idea to like throw him into the back of this like <laughs> this like cement truck. <laughs> Sounds like an incredible and it be, idea, like, it'd be, right? Because it'd be like boom yeah. or something like that. Well, like as we're doing that, my, the homie that's driving, it's a bunch of us packed in the car because into his car because we grab him out of my car, hop into his, um, or it's like a suburban, whatever. I'm like, I should throw him in there, right? And they're like, right. And so I'm trying to light it, but I'm outside of the car trying to light it. And like, it's not lighting. And so, <laughs> cause uh, the wind's blowing <laughs> like with the light. Right, yeah. classic. So then I get, like kneel down like between the floor and between the, my legs and I'm trying to light it still. And I'm like, ksh, 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 and like it won't go. And then one of them just catches it. And so like the whole, the thing goes, and then the flares from that light the bag, like the other little oh. fuses. So then like I pull it out and I roll the window down. And I look over and it's a cop. And I'm like, it's you or me. And I was like, it's the cop every time. So I just oh my I throw the whole thing. God, dude. And the fucking unit is just like, like burning up. Like the cop calls like, uh, oh, we're also one stoplight behind the uh, uh away from the the jail <laughs> like i did because they just built this jail i didn't know this is a new jail Wait, so just to I clarify was, you threw a bag of cherry bombs into a cop car yeah holy shit it was like partially accident but then i also was just were like you it's on, a cop were you drunk or like on drugs or always yeah always and so i was i uh, so i was just like it's me or you like and the shit's popping in my hands and he like, rolled because he so he rolled his window down to give us a fair warning like hey like get the fuck back in the car because he saw us saw me hanging out the car window mm. when I was trying to light it because I was sitting on the thing right on the window trying to like make sure I got a good throw and I was like this is stupid like light it smarter and then like that's when it I lit it dumber. How are you still not in prison? Um, so I had a really good lawyer and like uh, a lot of money later we got it like just not dropped but not what do you call it when you get it like Uh, changed it i gotta switch to criminal mischief uh i i forget the legal word but yes you got it bumped Um, down yeah bumped down but Uh, so not dropped just dropped is like completely just to further clarify one more time yeah you threw cherry bonds into a cop car and they exploded inside the cop car uh, he was, had like all these burns all over him (laughs) and you didn't go and so you went i was in jail i was in jail for how long I don't even remember how long I was in jail. Um, I would have to call my mom. <laughs> like, hey, mom. It's like funny. I was in jail for a long time, for a while, and then they got me out, and then they put me. We paid a lot of money, and then they finally like put me on. I went to like this like, I guess I went to trial for it or whatever, and then they gave me criminal mischief, which is I think is only class B misdemeanor, and then I got to imagine your lawyer was probably smart. And I, I'm sure in court he was like, "Hey, this kid's grieving his father." Just yeah, they away. definitely played that card. Like, so they brought up the whole, they d- did the whole shit and just made me look like a troubled kid, whatever. Right. But like, so I got lucky there. But they did that, and then um, I had to like pay all these fines, and then I had to do like I was supposed to do community service and community service, and I had like two years, or it was supposed to be like five years. Or, it was two or five years um, uh, probation, but like real probation. And then when I got there, they told me that, oh, I had deferred adjudicate. And then they told me when I went my for my first day of probation that I had um, uh, unsupervised probation for two years. And I don't know who that did something in between the time yeah, that I got. What some, does it even mean, unsupervised? So like basically like if you, you can't get in trouble in those two years. But oh, that okay. next week, I see. But like, you're not reporting. To you're not reporting, and you have to. <laughs> but that. but that, the, the next, that next week, that Friday, I went in on Monday, and that Friday, I was in jail. Okay? I hate you, dude. What happened? You just avoided what no. should have been attempted murder <laughs> of a police officer, so and you was, were in jail the next week. There's this thing. Uh, there's a haunted house, like, but they like got rid of the house, and so it's just a foundation, but it had a basement. <laughs> And we went down there, and it's actually haunted. I can confirm from that night. And no, it is. I swear to God, we heard someone scream, and then we heard like music, like in the basement. There's no nothing, no power yeah. down there. But basically, someone had come in before we went. We got there, and had like vandalized the place. And somebody like screamed and made a loud noise. And then like me and all my friends, we all went to jail, and they all got bailed out. And my mom was like, 
you just got put on probation. Like, I'm not coming to bail you out. So I just had to do time served for that one. But it wasn't even that big a deal because it was just uh, trespassing. But I should have got, like, in big trouble because of my probation. But the only thing that makes me think that I didn't get in that big of trouble was because I got put on papers that Monday. Uh, and then that Friday. So I don't know if, like, it, like something it, didn't, like, it, it, didn't, it didn't fully click into the system. It's something. But, like, I was like, I'm going to jail, jail. Like, like I'm for going real. To, yeah. Because you were also over 18 at that point. Because the yeah. cherry bomb thing, you're still, like, technically 17. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. You like, must how, have I, been. Also, gel. What was your favorite part? Uh, the water. <laughs> 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 have you ever accidentally drank water you shouldn't that you should boil? From the toilet bowl. <laughs> no, I mean from it. It doesn't. It's from the faucet no. or from the thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Like when, should, yeah. Yeah, that was the worst. That's yeah, that's the worst shit. So you were just permanently dehydrated. Sick. Just sick. I got sick from the water because I didn't know you were supposed to boil it. What was your least favorite part of jail? The water. <laughs> the water. <laughs> Did you, like, make any friends that you still, like, know well, and keep in touch with? No. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no. Were there any good, like, professors, teachers? No, there was... What was uh, the dorm life like? No, there was, there was, like, a few things where there was, like, a few people that knew, like, my grandpa. Huh. Yeah. That they like recognize me because of that. Me, my dad, and my grandpa all look a lot. And we, I look like a spitting him. Me or my brother looks like a spitting image of my dad. And, also and I don't look too far looks, look off, far, far off from my brother. You and your and, brother are twins. Yeah. So no, we're not twins. You're not. We right, right, look right. I should clarify. Alike, it's a younger brother by a year, but you fifteen look, months. You but look we look so similar. So fucking almost alike. Irish twins. We yeah. Yeah, that's I, wish, I literally told him that we're, I was like, you realize we're Irish twins. He's like, he's no, like, dude, we're Mexican. <laughs> 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 Fuck. So yeah. you're, yeah, no, we're Mexican. Your uh, your grandfather was in jail as well. I don't know what I heard a lot of stories about my dad. I heard a lot of stories about my grandpa, um, but they, my grandpa, when we, once we were born, I guess my dad said that he had already cleaned up his act. I don't know what the fuck he did. I don't really think that he did anything too crazy. I can't see my grandpa doing anything too crazy. But when is my dad died, he still is your grandpa still alive? Nah, he died when I was like little. Oh, okay, and um, or not little, but like younger. <laughs> and then when my dad died, like that's when I like met a lot of people that was like, yes. yo, like do you know who your dad was? What your dad right. did? And I was like, I didn't know that because and. We don't have to get into any specific stories, yeah. but your dad was like with the shits. Like my dad was just, my dad was like crazy, but he was also just like really funny. It sounds like he someone was, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you and him. My are dad, pretty damn my similar. dad is very like. I'm either having a fucking hilarious time or like I'm gonna gut someone. <laughs> like that's, that was my yeah. dad. But I don't think you're as after, intense as you would gut somebody, but you are very. Yeah, I'm a pretty I've, loving person. I've seen you get mad though. Yeah, but I I would say I'm a pretty loving yeah, person. So I'm just like a um I'm basically like I'm a really nice guy and I just like do funny dumb shit. But don't get on your bad side. Not even. I'm, no. I'm a pretty loving guy. Let's not say that. <laughs> There's some. There are are some public videos of you. There's some stories. There's some. <laughs> There's some public YouTube videos. I know. Videos well, let's not get into that either. Okay. So I won't tell kids what to search. I'll just put a link in the description. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. So you're in and out of jail. You suffer personal. I wouldn't say in and out. It's like it was in and out. And then you went out. And then uh, I was back in. So you're like sleeping in cars. You're running away from home. You're doing yeah. stupid shit. I'd only like visit home like every few, like month, like month. One, probably once or and then every other month. You also had a child in this process. Yeah, I had a kid, and then um, that, when you I was were working like, in a warehouse, when you were like, like 20, 20, 21. 21. Yeah, yeah. I was working in a warehouse, and in that time was like this weird stage where I was like, you know, am I gonna, am I gonna keep doing like music because like touring with bands wasn't necessarily like doing the you know the job or like am i gonna like you know get a career as a forklift driver <laughs> like right you were gonna go get your forklift i i was i already did oh, wow, and i was working in a warehouse and while i did that like scum shows yes. me a bunch of artists he shows me like horsehead wicker face he shows me slug christ father 
early um 21 savage this like must be 2016 yeah or 2015 even something like that Mm -hmm. and i was like yo i want to do this and that just like fueled the fire and then on top of that i was like making money here and then i was like let's do it because you were already making music you grew up playing instruments yeah and i was like why split it with five people like and this is the funny thing of I forget what show I was backstage at. It was like some like fest or something. And uh, I was like fucking talking to a band. They're like a pretty well-known band. And mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, we're almost done with tour. Like we're all going home. We're going to like sell all our shit from our apartments. And this time I'm like, didn't you just do a headlining? But like, they're like, yeah, we need to split it with six people. I'm like, right. Yeah. That's the bad And then part. a lot of like, like, you know, my whole situation with like me signing a lot of like, bands and a lot of other people that sign it like labels have to pay out like merch cuts and like touring right. cuts like to the label right and so it's like think about that on top of splitting it with five people brutal at the end of the day you're like oh you've been touring all month i just fucking thousand dollars literally <laughs> one of my favorite bands uh-huh. uh i'm gonna say the name but we're gonna bleep it from the final video uh uh-huh fucking oh literally one of my all-time favorite bands legends everyone loves them i was just on a zoom and i'm not gonna say which company i was on the zoom with and all of a sudden fucking pops up like the drummer or the bass player i fucking forget who he is i'm like and he's like yeah dude i'm like holy shit damn you guys you don't fucking that's but if, yeah. if you had the success of that band as you, one person, Lil Lotus, you would be living Yeah, you'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. But, so, you start making music. Uh, I feel like the first time I heard of you, it uh-huh. had to have been, like, A Boyfriend's or something, or Lil Aaron, Smart uh-huh. Death. How long was it before you linked with those guys? Because in my brain, it's like you all came onto the scene no i i think that we had talked before boyfriends happen but because when i got to la and boyfriends started you were like dude this new shit you're doing boyfriends is sick because we were already friends but we hadn't like talked like business we hadn't talked like because remember whenever i that was when i came to la right no when the fuck was it i when we had to talk about us working together i'm gonna go on my phone right now yeah, and do that. We can, you know, first uh, and foremost, this deserves a proper introduction. It does. But a Cam, Quiet Cam, the legendary, like yes. all, like for real, actual legend. I almost got a Quiet Cam tattoo, not knowing that it was good. Did you really almost <laughs> yeah, get a Quiet I, Cam I, tattoo? I really wanted the Quiet Cam tattoo. Holy shit. Because I was like, this is sick. So and many then, like, people. I met him and I was like, I'd be a dweeb if I did this. No, I know. So him. many people have that tattoo. It's crazy. Like, he fucking yeah. posts on his story and shit all the time, like Russia, everywhere. But Quiet Cam is the producer of the Master of Podcast now. Quiet Cam, legend. Quite, legend. quite literally, the first person to document the underground scene, like, first little peep interview by, yeah. um, by like, two years. I used to watch um, a lot of, like, the people that, when I first came to L.A., that I would, like, talk to. Right. Where, because I watched their quiet cam, like, where um, you, would do, you would do the fucking thing where you, like, interview them, and then, like, they're recording something, and then you yes. go to a show. Yeah, and and then it's like their shows. They're like, Cam look at Quiet Cam is smiling behind the camera. Blushing. Cam is the most humble person. I know. I am so blessed. So the podcast will be coming out more frequently as I search my phone for the first Saturday, March thirty first, twenty eighteen. Is that time 18? we got ramen? But we, we we knew each other before. Yeah, that. I mean, of course. So I remember. Yeah, you start making music. We can fast forward through it a little. You're uploading uh-huh. to SoundCloud. You're having some success. You end up, I think this was your first tour, and it's a Nothing Nowhere tour. As Lotus, tour. yes. As Lotus, Lotus tour. and literally like two stops in, the tour gets canceled, and you end no, up in Los Angeles. No, not two stops. We were, touring for, we were touring for a bit. We probably had like, it was, we stopped in, in, in uh, SLC. That was the date that, that stopped. And that was a good length of the tour, I want to say. Pro- uh, a little bit over half. But we but did still, that. But still, there was stopped. like half of the tour. There was still a good chunk. It gets canceled. 2018 yeah. on my timeline, 
uh been running the blog for eight years at that point the concert series for four years yeah uh and 2018 is right around when I started meeting with labels to eventually launch Mass Records. But I'm in this lull between uh -huh. launching my own fucking label and just like making blog posts or something. Yeah. So I had some time on my hands and we meet at a ramen place in Los Angeles. Uh, I remember that picture. Yeah. And I I don't want to do re like revisionist history, but I'm pretty positive you were like, can you manage me? Like, I don't think... Yeah, I, I was being managed by somebody at the time, and then, like, they wanted me to go to rehab, so I just, like, ignored them for three months. Or for a while. Not three months. I ignored them for a while, and I was posted up... <laughs> I did not know. I did not know this side of the story. <laughs> yes, you did. You no, did. No, at the time. Oh, oh, no, at the time. At I would the not time, have told I, this. You, like, you fucking probably told me, like, a year ago. I was like, everything's great. Yeah. Everything's yeah. going great. Yeah. I just need some help. Yeah. Like, it was like... Just on the, the logistics side of things. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I can do because this. Because basically you had been managed. This probably isn't interesting to anyone besides us. But you, had been, <laughs> you had been managed by a friend. And then you had like a real manager who uh -huh. managed other bands and stuff. Uh, but it wasn't working out. And you were like, hey, can you manage me? And I had quasi managed like so many acts in the underground uh -huh. over the years. But never like full on like I'm committing every day of my life. But yeah. like really I had helped out a lot of acts throughout the years uh and for some reason i was just staring at that face over a bowl of ramen i was like sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we went to uh, little aaron's house or something yeah we we're at little aaron's house and i think we walked to uh 93 feet of i Smoke's can't house. believe you remember this yeah <laughs> i was because i was kind of sober that day we walked if you weren't sober we i would have said all right well there's things for the ramen i would have left yeah i was uh, like i had to get it together so you'd manage right. me <laughs> but so we walked to 93 or like velveteers and i think kill station was there such a fun a lot of people were there and but literally no one picked up their phones and then we went home N yeah i thought we went inside okay yeah. i was fucked up yeah. okay. i thought we went inside you, i talked to people yeah. After I was like, yeah, I'll manage you. You probably snuck some oh, and drugs. We, we, went, we went back to Aaron's, <laughs> and then you left from Aaron's. Right. It's probably what makes more sense. You got fucked up. Uh, yeah. But so at that point, did you move to Los Angeles in 2018? That was like kind of at the time where I was like, I would fly out to LA for like, week, like a, a week or a week and a half, two weeks or something. And then the priority at that time was kind of like boyfriends like right. that's around the time that boyfriends happen because at, by 2018 you have motorola with smart death out i would and, like to say we and did. you have body bag with cold heart out that one definitely would have would have been out yeah yeah you had you had already met with labels before i managed you yeah that was funny yeah and then uh you were having some success with those songs. What was that like from being in bands and all of a sudden you're Lil Lotus and people know your songs? And I just was just like, let's get to the point. Let's get to it. Like, right. And understand you're going to give me a shitty offer the first time. Like, get to the... But I mean, outside of the labels, like, what was it like? You were turning into a little star that you had fans as Lil Lotus and... Your songs were going up on YouTube and SoundCloud. At that time, I feel like the way that I thought about things was like, I was like, I want to be on the radio. Like that was my like right. idea of like stuff that when like a, an artist that's just like, by like not with a band like that, like like a pop star like type thing. I was like, oh, I have to be on the radio, and I didn't feel like I was anywhere near that goal. Right. And then like, uh, so like talking to labels like that, I was like, turn me into a pop star. Turn me into like, right. a huge like thing immediately i was like i wanted like immediate gratification it was also um, for context it was after p passed away um as it was as i was coming passed up away it like was in before right and then, as i was coming up it was before and then i started coming to la and i was i was like associating with every oh so look, but when body bag the ep happened right people was like living with ned in as we were Park. making right. yeah well, as we were uh, making body bag because Ned and that's produced why, that song yeah and apparently like, that's why like Coldy like did I was like Ned like I want a like a feature on this like we should do this I was he's like who are you thinking and I was like you know any of the homies like whatever and then uh I guess he asked Coldy or whatever and people's like always singing that song 
Uh-huh. And so he was like, wow. totally did it. Like, I, I don't know, like, the exact did dialogue. Did you ever meet there. Peep? Yeah. Peep, I was at, like, when people come to Dallas, I was at the shows. Mm. And the last show that Peep was, he that did, he did near Dallas was in Fort Worth at, at Wrigley Theater or something theater in Fort Worth. And they were like, hey, come play Body Bag. And oh. I was like, I'll catch you on the next one. I was like, I have my son. I had my son that oh, day. Okay. And then, like, everybody's like, just bring your son. Like, right. You know, like, and let him watch you perform. But, like, he was a baby. And I was like, I'd have yeah. to get the big uh-huh. ears for him. And I didn't want to look like a piece of shit with my little baby. Like, and just like, Wah. And he's, like, he's always been super, like, I don't want to go places. So, like, I was like, we're just going to stay. Right. And then fucking... Uh, the what is it like? I think it was like two dates later was when Pete passed. Yeah, that's like it. I feel like that's whether it's part of the documentary. Again, I always get mixed up what's public, what's private. But it's like those Texas shows are when people were yeah. like, "Oh shit, this isn't going right." Yeah, uh, I feel like that's probably in the documentary. Peep passing away definitely like those sort of things. Like, oh, I'll just see him next time or whatever. Like yeah. since that, I've definitely tried to live my life in a different way of like not doing that yeah because that, that was like i think the last time i saw him before that was he played um house of blues and i was just i was just hanging out with like wiggy and horsehead i had like one of my homegirls with me and skill was playing skill played mm. that show um and uh jp played that jp wow. dream Talk. yeah Crazy. he played that show that's which rare. is rare, as yeah, fuck. So rare. yeah um but uh ned has a story like that with juice world where yeah. ned's like i was at cha shocker and juice world hit me up like he called me and he wanted me to come to the studio and i was like oh i'll just fucking record with them next time and they had never recorded together and then like they didn't connect they never connected again and i think maybe juice world i'm getting the story wrong like juice world either blew up or whatever and then he passed away and they just never um, yeah juice uh i have yeah i have a story like that with juice too like, right fucking, you do have a story me with, and right. juice so like juice like there's a point where he was only following me fatty and scum this is the thing that kids will will never they'll be like what the fuck they'll, they'll like happen? they'll like, like never understand that whether it's a brand or an artist, at one point they were yeah. small, yeah, and they had influences, yeah, and, and they just had the right team, and, like and, they did right. the exact right moves at the right time. But they blew if, the fuck up. if like well deserved though, if like you went on Twitter right now and be like, "Yo, I remember when he when I was the only one who followed," people would be like, "Oh bullshit!" But like yeah. you know, there was a point yeah. when you had more clout than him, and you were already doing it for longer than him, and literally you and Fatsy. He like followed like five people and yeah. If was, you go to his SoundCloud now, he still follows you, right? I don't know. Somebody was like, "Yo, like I didn't even know who Juice World was because, yeah. but he had already been making music. Like he had been, he already had like a bigger following than me. Oh, okay. And like, um, I guess this is like I don't know when it was, but somebody was like, "Yo, like Juice, like you, Fatsy and Scum are the only people that Juice follows right now. Like, do you know him?" And I was like, "No, like." So I went and checked him out, and I was like, yo, this guy's so fucking good. And I was, like, stoked on him. We didn't talk for a long while, and I forgot how the conversation started where we actually finally did talk. And we were just talking about doing music and all this shit and whatever. And then um, there was the the last time that me and Juice talked. No, there was two times. I remember this one day. I was just fucked off on, like, Roxy's and shit. And I wake up, and then, like, everybody's, like, everybody's, like, R.I.P. Juice, R.I.P. Juice. And I was, like, what the fuck? So I'm, like, blowing up Juice on his phone, and I'm, like, yo, are you good? Like, f- what the, like I didn't believe it. I didn't think it was real. And then everybody's, like, yo, it's real. So then I, like, freaked out, and I was, like, what the fuck? And we had already been friends and been talking, like, for a while. We would just, like, hit each other up. I remember when he called me, he was, like, there's, like, some ex from a long time ago that he was in this, like, argument with. And I was like, yo, just calm down. He's at home. He's telling me all, like, how excited he was about his deal and all this shit. But then he was just, like, upset about other shit. And then I was like, yo, calm down. Everything will be fine. We're, we're chill. And so, like, after all that of us being friends, like, um, 
I see the the R.I.P. Juice thing, and I just kind of, like, lost it. Like, one, because I was just already fucked up. Right. And then I was just like, dude, he's so talented. And it's like, what the fuck? And so then I find out it's a hoax. And he oh, ends up calling me from a, remember calls me from a new number. Right. And he's like, yo, I lost my phone at this event. Or something happened to my phone. I forgot what it was. And he's like, he's like, everybody's all worried about me and shit like that. And I was like, I just, I'm just glad you're fine. So then, like, when it actually happened... You thought it was fake. Oh, actually, so before it actually happened, he was, like, hanging out with someone I don't like. This is actually such a funny story. Yeah. I think I was there for this. Cause this I was, was this when we were in the studio at Lemon Tree, right. across from the Hive. I, I was say who there in the studio for, with, but. for a few... I don't even remember. Yeah. I was there a few times when you were, like, texting him or on, like, FaceTime with him. Yeah. I never really talked he to him. He FaceTimed me, yeah. and in the background, so I see somebody that I don't recognize, and they're like, yo, what's up, Lotus? And I was like, yo, who is that? And I, like, and, like, I, it's, like, a terrible signal, because we're in yeah. that studio at Lemon Tree, and then I'm like, yo, pull up. I'm doing a cover of Helena. And he's like, let me get on that. He's like, I want to be on that. Me and you on a co- doing a cover of Helena by MCR would be insane. I was like, pull up. He's like, why don't you pull up on me? Like, I'm with so-and-so. And I can't really hear what he's saying. And I was like, hold up. Let me step outside and call you. And so then I call him again. But in the time that I'm walking out, I go to his story because I was like, I want to know who the fuck that was in the background. Because if it's who I think it is, I don't want to fucking pull up. So then, like, uh, I see it. And then he answers the phone and i was like yo like why don't you just come over here because i don't fuck with that fool so he's like let me call you back and like hangs up <laughs> and basically <laughs> yeah. that and that then, that that uh person got super offended and then juice didn't pull up yeah well he was just like yo like come to this to this studio instead like right, you know okay. like later tonight but like we're texting all day and he was talking talking to me like how oh, about how fucked up he was. remember yeah. i know who you're talking about yeah. the lemon tree now too yeah god dude there's two people yeah. that i that's shouldn't so have been, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have been in that studio either that's so funny and so then i was like i was like um we we're just talking about like how much like we had been using and i had just got sober and he's like yo i want to you know i want to stop like using like how did you stop and i was like talking to him about it and um uh, Cause that's when, like when I just stopped doing blues, mm. and then um, and did, what are blues for people that don't like know? Roxy's, like which is what it's like oxycontin, like aftermarket, right? Yeah, but it's like it's all pressies, right? So and pressies yeah. are people like, making pressed, like fake yeah, drugs. Those, I mean, right? the ones that I would get were definitely pressed as pills. Like you told me one preference. time, uh, you told me one time that you liked taking pressed pills. Yeah. That's when I ever, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, that was a bad time. Yeah. So yeah. basically, Juice World eventually passes away. Peep had already passed, and you're so, you're hooked on drugs. Uh, there's one, you know, like on and off. I had been, yeah. I had those sober streaks, and then I would. So, yeah, there's like one story that me and you always speak about. Yeah, is that you came over to my house. <laughs> I don't even remember why, but you were super yeah. fucked up. I was like, I just need to talk to someone. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, dude, let's get out of the house. Let's like literally just walk down the street. We walked 0.3 miles to a restaurant. Uh, I wouldn't even say 0.3. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, it is 0.3. I'm it thinking 1.3. It is 3. 3. Yeah. 0.3, but in yeah. in your head, it was we like you were like walking five. a marathon. Yeah. And you were like falling out of your sandals. My sandal ripped and I was falling. Oh, no, it didn't no, even rip. I just kept like, stepping through it. Your sock was like coming loose or something, but like you were super fucked up. And then we went back to my house and you were like kind of sobering up and you're like bro i need to just I take started a shower sobering up and i, and like, I oh took my. more yeah you like went yeah. in the shower for like an hour yeah and then like you got in a fight on got the phone fight in the shower in the shower and my then you ex. took pills or whatever and then you come out and you just fell asleep on my couch I'm, like, mumbling you said that i was talking yeah and yeah. i don't yeah i was like saying all kinds of shit and you're like and, what and like i had to leave to see my girlfriend's mom or something like it was like something i couldn't avoid it was like a serious and family then, thing did my ex pick me up or did i get a lift or did you drop me off i think you got a lift you must have been in an okay position to get a, in a lift but anyway, the moral of the story is is yeah. that there would be times when I'd see you and you'd be perfectly fine and we'd be talking about music and this yeah. and that. And there would be times when literally you're just in a different world, super oh, fucked up on there. drugs. And that is a big reason why I was like, yo, I'm going to manage Lois. Not, not that I'm going to fucking be a superhero and fix his life, but like, let me yeah. just, you know, like I had just lost Peep. 
uh, let me just like make sure that I can do what I can do in this scenario. Yeah. But that kind of persisted for that's like say 2018. It and wasn't really until 2020. Like you weren't releasing like that much music. I wasn't. People liked your most streamed song on Spotify was like body bag, a body bag for a while. Yeah. And by that time I had started my label with Warner, uh, yeah getting a little more busy and you were in a low but like it would go like i like maybe wouldn't hear from you for like three weeks because yeah. like there wasn't anything going on and like there wasn't that much work to do but it's like whatever and then i remember when the label was getting to be a bit too much work uh i was i was like yo like maybe we should find someone else this or that but then by happenstance we end up I was at a lunch with somebody and they mentioned like, Hey, there's this indie rock label. Oh, and dude, like yeah. they're looking at some <laughs> artists in your world. Do you remember what they, what you called them? Do you remember what you, like you were trying to pronounce it on the phone with me? I had moved to Texas and I was oh, sober. Oh my God. They're so I moved to Texas. I got sober for like a year and nine months. And we can talk for like dude, fucking let's do 15 it. hours. You moved to Texas. Yeah. I bought and a house you, with you, my other Oh my ex. god. You fuck Okay, so you so you fucking broke up with the one ex and then ended up with the other you one. Ended up with someone else. You bought a bought house. A house, moved back you to You got Texas. engaged. Got engaged. <laughs> like straight up, you and your fiance purchased a house in Texas. Yeah. I forgot about that completely. Yeah. So you were holed up in Texas pretty much. But you were sober also. I was sober as fuck. Like, For, I literally, like, nothing. Like, the most, like, the most I had anything of was a kombucha. Like, a regular one, wow. not a hard one. Like, a regular Why did you kombucha. make the choice to be sober? After being super fucked up? It was part, well, okay, so there's a picture of me hanging from a street light yes. over Cha Cha Bar. Yes, I've seen this. <laughs> um, uh, there was that. There was a video of me... Um, I was hiding in the freezer at a CVS trying to scare people. <laughs> I threw a bag of candy on the security guard at a CVS. I um, So you were like 17 again. Yeah. Throwing, <laughs> That's a great throwing, way to put it. Instead of throwing cherry bombs, yeah. you're throwing a bag of candy. There's like, all, I would, I would, I one time, like me and my ex got in this huge fight and I was just like, bah, 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 bah. and she's like, okay, like, bye. Like, right. don't come home. So then I'm like trying to like go back to my other house because I was like living in Boyle Heights with the homies. Mm -hmm. Try to go back to my other house and nobody, everybody was at Chaw and my phone died and my key that I usually like would hide or something like that wasn't there. And so, um, oh no, I like, I fell asleep on Skid Row for a little bit and then I hopped in a, I ended up at this store and I asked someone to buy me a lift and someone for some reason. Wow. Bought me a lift. Your guardian and angel. And I'm carrying my fucking bag of clothes and all this shit. And I go to the house and none of the homies show up to the house until like 4 a.m. because they went from there to like the, uh, from Cha Cha to the other homies house. Right. So they're like, holy shit. And I wake up with mosquito bites all over me. And I'm like, fuck, like where have y'all been? Like, uh. And you were like something. It was like change. shit like that. So there's like so many reasons I got sober. And like, also, like, I just, like, I, I couldn't sleep without, like, having a, I would go, like, I, I couldn't sleep through the night. I would go, like, three hours, and then I needed a bump just because so I'd wake up from the withdrawals of, like, shit, like, whether it was alcohol or, like, coke or, like, if I was, like, doing Xanax or something. And It was in uh, this stage when you were, That was, like, like my worst. When... You and, never and as much as like you know, I say my ex, one of my exes like that ex definitely saved my life at that point. Of so course, I love you, baby. But <laughs> no, for real, I right. honestly mean that. Like, yeah, that she probably saved my life at that point. Even though like things ended a certain way or whatever. And so, but it was really, it was, it was really bad. It was and, getting bad because at one point, and you would never tell me things. You would always, I'd always talk it up. Always, like, it's fine. One never tell me things, and then if I heard it, it would literally be like a year later. So like yeah. a year later from like, that that's low why point, you were acting like that. You were like, "Yo, I remember when I was with the first ex, we would take fentanyl on purpose." Yeah, I see. I still don't fully understand what that means because in my head, I see well, those just memes get, like, of we, like 
this much of fentanyl can kill you, but you were just doing it. How does that work? Well, like, I mean, the only, like, so the person that we would get our shit from was the same person that got locked up for the shit with Mac. Oh, with Mac Miller. This is the same right. show that we would get. Right. Yeah. So you, oh, okay, so you like the press ones because it had. They were just like stronger, but like sometimes you get hot spots. Which is what? Like a stronger part of it, like at once. And you said in that process you overdosed a few times. Um, I mean, it was, yeah. It was some nasty but, parts. So, but I had to get, like, I, that was a first, first um so you uh, right right right. so anyway the fast forward like 2018 you move to texas you get engaged you buy a house and you were planning on living there forever you were sober uh you're seeing your kid all the time granted also you're always flying back to see your kid that's the one constant like yeah i still like i every month i fly back to see my son i I, I make sure i can and even at your lowest points which is commendable you would go back and And i would withdraw for two days before i pick him up I, i would withdraw for two days uh, just to get through the, like the worst parts, and then then I could be like manageable. Yeah. And then I just it's like insane. be dad and do my thing, but I just never wanted him to like really see me like that. Right. So I always made sure to like try and just like bite the bullet, <laughs> basically. So crazy. But but so yeah, what? So like, but that's like how bad. That's like the craziest part is that like I was like, you're willing to go through all that just so that you can like maintain your habit, right. like. But. But so you moved back to Texas 2018, yeah. maybe 2019. Dude, I don't remember the date. I have no reference of time in my brain at all, ever. And you, same. You moved in with your brother. You had a couple roommates. Yeah, you were making I've, music there lightly, but still not. Was, I was working on ideas for an album. Right. Because I never had a proper album. And at that time, you called me and you said, do you know, this? going back to where you yeah. said you, you, somebody was like, oh, so you know funny. this indie label. You're like, do you know this label called Ebida on the phone? Ebida? Ebida? I don't remember like, saying it like that. You said it weird. I, I, I was Maybe probably not like, exactly I like that. I was probably like, do you know this label, Epitaph? Something weird. And then I was like, what? No. I was like, send me the link. Send, I was me, like, send uh, me their uh, roster. Yeah. I was like, no, they did like a bunch of warp stuff back in the day, but they're like an old punk label. And then I yeah. sent you their Instagram. I was so like, like, oh, oh Epitaph? Epitaph? Like, what the fuck? I so, like, <laughs> again, I don't know what. This is like the line of like, what am I allowed to say on camera? What am I not? But so I was out to lunch with someone. They're like, yo, Epitaph, they've never signed artists like Lotus, yeah. but they're signing a couple artists who are in his scene and who are his friends. Uh, you should reach out or some, or like, I don't even know if they, he, uh, they like, they were aware of us yeah, and a bunch even, of the homies. And they're like, we want to get in meetings with people. But I feel like, like a lot, like I'm, out of everybody that like has signed to them yeah like uh coldy probably knows them as much as i do a bunch of the bands on those labels like i grew up listening to epitaph bands like, right and you were uh, growing up going to warp tour and playing and fucking i was yeah bands. playing in bands like that we looked up to all the warp tour bands i loved all like all my fucking to this day like some of my friends and i'm just like right. dude you have no idea like i literally grew up watching that little fucking epitaph logo in the corner yeah. seeing your fucking face and i was like love it but so but. i got wind that they were interested in the scene and then i hit up somebody who's in the world who's a manager i'm like hey why don't we just go take this meeting together we can go 50 50 on the manager and this person was like yeah but i need so and so involved and i'm yeah. like that's not going to work so basically we just did it ourselves i cold emailed the founder of epidef i literally just guessed his email yeah, <laughs> I, yeah and and then they they took they were down. I said, "Hey, yeah, yeah, they here's the whole story." And they're like, "Yeah, of course, let's set up a meeting." Uh, but basically, again, we're in meetings like that next. Like, yeah, week. again, I don't know. Fuck it, I'll just say it is that somebody, one of your, <laughs> I'll just say it, somebody, yeah, <laughs> one of your previous managers, essentially. Was like, no, was no, like no, no. oh, Lotus is holed up in Texas and he's like a drug addict. And, you know, I don't know. He's not reliable. So I had to get on the phone with the president and the founder of the label. And it was a fine. It was a, it, I, I didn't have to convince him of anything, but I just had to give him the lowdown. Yeah. So we ended up taking that meeting. Yeah. Uh, and it's been like the best thing. Like, yeah. Best, like, best contract i feel like we could have got out of 
that whole situation. It's an incredible it's deal. It's a sick-ass contract. It's, it's an incredible... Comfortable, it's, happy, fun, without, control. <laughs> without giving away too much information, it's only streaming, and you get the lion's share of the percentage, and you got a sizable advance... And but they yeah. don't take merch or they don't take touring or anything. Yeah, and it was it's, just a two album deal. They just really stuck their neck out, ne- yeah. necks out for me. And I know they did the same for like a bunch of the homies that yeah. you know have signed with them. And so I know, like Smart like, Death, Smart Death and Gucci Hi- Coldy, High Water Gucci. signed at the same time, and then later NASCAR Outlaw and Cold Heart signed. And yeah. they've made the other plunges into it. Yeah, I got it. But that's the thing about Epitaph is that like wait Brett, like Brett's like. Ahead of the game. So Brett is the singer of Bad Religion. Oh, no, 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 no. So Brett. Uh, Brett's, you know, so he's not the singer of Bad Religion. Brett, the guy who owns Epitaph, yeah. he's in Bad Religion. Yeah. And he pretty much started it when, like in the 80s, when yeah. Bad Religion was like still touring and shit. And he was yeah. putting out like Rancid Records. I don't know the full history. He's but, just always been ahead of the yeah. game. Like, second, he like started getting that bread. He's investing in all kinds of yeah, shit and fucking. Started his label and fucking picked up all the bands that I fucking grew uh, up loving. And I was like, if you like me, then I guess it's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that, we signed that deal. Papa Brett. Yeah, I think maybe you end up breaking up with your fiance. You sell the house. Yeah, they get rid of the house. Yeah. Yeah, get rid, they get you rid of the house. move back um, to LA and LA. then you're not sober anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like almost caught up to current day. Yeah. But so there. what what happened with you not being sober? As we can see, there is a spicy chalada on the table. Oh, I thought you were talking about this. Yeah. Also, <laughs> which looks like a whip, it, so but it's it. actually a vape. This is a vape. <laughs> um, so why why did you sponsor break? Me. <laughs> why did you break sobriety? Um. There's not a good answer for that because I feel like. There's, I, there's, yeah, I really don't have any good answer for that. I, I would just sound like every addict. Ever. Right. You're like, oh, I'd be I like, can oh, handle I got it, it under control. It's under control. Like, <laughs> no one does. Yeah. I don't. I know that though. But um, I don't know. I just mm, 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 kind of chilled out recently. You'll yeah. hear a different story in a year. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> no, you won't. Um, you moved to Los Angeles. Moved back. Yeah. What was your I remember putting out the first record with Epitaph. The first Epitaph record, It's your yeah. first time playing a project, and we have the idea of like, hey, we don't want to just like wait all year and not drop music. Why don't we Split combine three EPs into an album? Yeah, the uh, volume one, volume two, volume three. But even that, that's, you still were that's like... That got spread out because... It got like, spread out. It was uh the protest. Like I didn't feel comfortable putting out music while like the protests were going on because I felt right. like that was more important. Pretty much, you start your first project and then I can't remember. We decided to split into three EPs so that uh-huh. you could be constantly releasing music. But then COVID happened. Yeah, I can't COVID. remember if you already put out the EP. <laughs> I should have done some research before this. I can't remember we, if you oh. already put out the EP and then COVID happened and there were still two left for your first album. I think the only EP before that was uh, one with a uh, horsehead. Oh, so you Remember, like, you like horsehead? hadn't even, but not with Epitaph. You didn't love the process of I'm gonna record a song and then eight months later I'm gonna finally put it out. Yeah, that's like I was, something I, was I remember. So used to, you were so used to immediately putting yeah, it out. Like I'm used literally to the like next day. us like like even with that EP with horsehead, like we recorded like hello songs together like one night, another night, maybe and. We and we spent another like night trying to get the art together, and then it was just like, okay, you ready? Okay, and, let's do it. And now it's on SoundCloud. And and your out. fans instantly have it. But when you're recording, for With even like, an indie label, it's like you need to pitch like, yeah, the playlist, whole, yeah. and you need to shoot music videos. You need to get artwork clear, yeah, and this and that. Like that. Uh, you need to get all the producers cleared, non paper. It just takes a while, even if it is an indie label. Uh, yeah, that album did fine i think honestly i don't think it did that great right? i don't think it did fine i don't even think it did that great yeah. because so for that album you were like sort of channeling emo rap i was I, I felt like that was mine where my album where i was like i want to be more than just what people call emo rap right I fucking hate that word yeah but i was like i want to i was like still there 
but I was like trying to find my footing and like is Lotus a band? Because remember I was saying I want to be a band, like I want to be in a band, right? Like, I and go back also, to my roots. like the first meeting with Epitaph, you were like, I want to drop the Lil from Lil Lotus. Yeah, I still do. But like even course, in my logo now, it's like Lil is like super yeah, Lil. But of and course, then, on fucking Spotify, there's another band called Lotus, and yeah, it would like so fuck kidding. everything up. Yeah, I thought about changing my name to just. Huh. So it was still I shouldn't have said it that. would still no it would yeah someone just took the instagram so just we will cut that out we will beep it. uh but that album didn't do great but so per the deal uh-huh there was an option for a second and brett took the second took option. The option but also okay let's talk about this you Feldman. fucking what Feldman. well yeah oh. uh, we will eventually talk about that uh you went from being an artist uploading to SoundCloud and moving around and this and that. Oh, shit. Eleanor here. Hello. There Sorry. she is. We're like going over. And like she talking. has a present. So we have a special gift. Part of Lotus's new management team. We haven't gotten to that part of the story yet. Uh, signed test pressing. Test pressing. For me? For you. For me. Okay. The let's. A uh, and B. Yeah, can. instead of just the A oh, and B shit. on one side, it says A and B. Wow, holy shit! This and they're the insane. they're the they're the good ones. They're the the keepers. Those are the ones we went with. Wow, can the camera see these? Why no, don't you hold on. one? Is this this is crazy. A and B. I'm absolutely B framing these. Press. So a test pressing is uh, what it sounds like. You listen <laughs> what to it, it sounds and, like. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I like the way. Oh wait, there's like fucking crackling on this one. You yeah, need to fix it. Yeah. Let's just so right here. there were some that had like the crackles. But I was like, no, let's not bring the fucking in big front boys. of the logo, man. Not I, mean, I love you, logo. but not that much. Let's just take a complete. There we go. <laughs> not um, in front. So the there fucking the first LP wasn't great. It was. It was, <laughs> it was <laughs> And yeah. also, you worked with a producer that got canceled in the process, yeah. and it was a fucking mess. Yeah. So then we go on to the second LP, uh-huh. and by this point, alt music is kind of making a comeback. Yes. Machine Gun Kelly's doing his thing. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so by the second LP, uh-huh. you had already been wanting to make band music, and at the same yeah. time, like this alt music thing is coming back around. Yeah. Um I had kind of already like done certain songs that sounded like that. Remember like when Brett was like, I like that one song and it was like a band song. It was me and Horsehead. Yes, yeah. And then it was uh, like acoustic he's like, and he was like, you no, it was, it was, a, it was a band. <laughs> oh, okay. It was, it was a right, full band right, song. Okay. And then I had started, I had put out sleep paralysis, which was like a mm-hmm. super big, like bring me the horizon influenced like song. I had put out like, um, um, uh, what's it called? Bet something. Uh, I don't know. I put out another song. No idea. Uh, there was another song. Like if I had a bunch of bands. You asked me to name basically. three of your songs from that album. I have no fucking clue. Yeah. <laughs> so there was. I had already started putting out those, and I remember saying like, I want to have a stage band. Yeah. I want to be in a band. Like I want Lotus to be a band. Like I don't care if I have to split it five ways now. Like we're good. Like it's fun like i just right. want that energy on stage so then the it's and i feel like i always kind of performed like it was a band right. like it wasn't always a rap show for me like it well, was always also like emo rap like, you like also don't rap is the little I don't secret rap at all. is that you literally never spit mm-hmm. one bar people oh thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's a little known fact about yeah. Lolo's, the Lotus emo rapper, is that he is not a rapper bar in his life. he's not a rapper <laughs> no i i literally would just like I wanted band stuff, and I I would always kind of perform with that whole like frontman vibe. Never right. just like, oh like everybody get on stage and well I did do that a few times. <laughs> I did, do that. <laughs> but it was always like it was it was very early in that like start a mosh pit uh-huh. scene. Like, right. Remember? It? Right. Yeah. When that, yeah when that was like fresh, and um, yeah we finally got to the point to where the big man Feldman comes yeah. into play. So basically you wanted to go for more of a band sound yeah it's while acts like machine gun kelly or whatever or like yeah. these kids from tiktok are like doing all emo music again uh-huh. and like there's cool new playlists on spotify that are highlighting the music yeah and like this whole scene's opening up and they're getting on the radio so me and uh brett and you had a talk or something it's like hey he's always wanted to do the band stuff uh He's like, you should work with Feldman. Right. And you have your in-house producers that you still work with, but 
John Feldman, for people who don't know, he was in the band. What's the name? Gold, you don't remember the name? Gold Finger. Gold. I was gonna say Gold Finger. <laughs> gold Finger. He was in Gold Member. He was in Gold Finger. And kids who don't know what that is, it's the song from Tony Hawk. Yeah, the biggest uh, song. Here it's like I the, am, yeah. doing everything. It's fucking huge. Huge. I heard him over. I heard him talking to somebody that he said that that pulled him out of work. I, Sorry, Feldman, if I got this wrong, but I was listening while you're on the phone over in studio. But he said something like he was at he was working at a shoe store. Wow! And like he got it, like he started doing he was because in it finger, literally changed and his it life changed his life and overnight. And he, and he was tours. yeah he was immediately he went from yeah. working in a fucking shoe store like I don't know if it was like leather shoes or what or like yeah Nikes was it like athletic like, kicks was but, he like sizing I, up people's feet yeah. or was he <laughs> selling, bringing, selling dunks off the <laughs> shelf he was fucking uh, yeah. bringing people saran wrapped yeah. dunks yes in 1981 <laughs> <On> <laughs> and then he just went to world tour but so outside of that he was responsible as a producer for like alvaro levine's first album and the used and good charlotte i'm probably um, getting all I don't this know, wrong was it? no so uh I think it was Avril's first album. I think there was a hair in my mouth. Wow. From my self knitted yeah. sweater. Um, it was um he did the used. He found the used. Um So he gets in the studio he with these bands. What is an executive bands, producer like, does? He helps Black them put Bell together Bride, songs. Somerset. He, he helps them write songs. He Blink. puts in the right producers. He Big produces band. twenty years later. <laughs> This whole scene's coming uh-huh. back around. He's still the guy. He's doing this with Machine Gun Kelly. Probably, I, I don't know. I He's would assume it, so. Like, uh, he picked up Mod. Fucking Black Bear, whatever. And Brett's good friends with him from those Goldfinger, Bad Religion yeah. days. Uh, and we worked that out. But here's what I'll say. What? There were like months of phone calls between me and you of you going back on if you wanted to take. I sleep. didn't know what I wanted to do because you had your friends who had produced your stuff, and you're like, I just uh-huh. want to work with them. We have was... a good vibe, and then there was this dude who literally makes smash banger radio, yeah, billboard hits, and I'm like, Lo, this we already committed, and you're like, Did we send the money yet? I'm like, I don't know, like, it doesn't matter. Like, can but... I still do my songs to my friends? Yeah, can... yeah. There's a uh, blend of fear of success and a blend of um. Um, just too much of like the way that I felt like I was used to doing things. Mm-hmm. Like I, the same shit where I was like, I don't want to put out a whole album and have to wait and sit on it and do music videos right. and like, can we just drop it now? Like, fuck it, we'll do the music videos later. Like, leave me alone. Like, it was like that, and I was like, oh my god, this is getting too real. And, and like then, I think also the money was a little bit more, but basically since Brett has such a good relationship, they yeah. cut a nice deal. I also we very, also went in two days and right those two I was hung over his dick balls. We cut two songs, me him and Travis, and then Travis like, Barker, Travis Bar. I'm from, like recording uh, the Aquabats. <laughs> yeah, that's the one you're gonna reference. Yes. <laughs> that's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> Uh, I was he's like, a, transplants, but. he's a, oh yeah, right. The transplants yeah. fire. He's a, on the album cover of their first record. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he's I'm like sit- wearing the full set. Like he's wearing the glass and like the blue suit. Yeah. I'm standing there recording at Feldman's and, um, I oh, know before I'm even standing there, Feldman's like, I'm going to play you some songs. Like, tell me if you like any of these, like I got some top line and, uh, yeah. And I was like, I didn't like any of like the, you know, I like, I was just like, oh, let's try and like, and I was still getting my footing, like right. working with Feldman and I'm hung over as fuck. I tried to cancel. Remember I tried to cancel and y'all were like, oh go to that session now. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm laying in bed. So and needless like, to say, I this get was up also our last hurrah of me being your manager. This was. Yeah. This is the, the, your famous last words were go to that session now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and so I go and he's like, yeah, uh, Travis is going to be here. We're gonna, he's going to track some, some drums. And I'm like, like Travis Richter, like my homie Travis. Right, yeah. Like I'm who, thinking of like, who fucking who that, like also Cause Sarah. you're saying on a first name basis, uh-huh. like I should know, like, like he's one of the mutual homies. I had never met Travis before. And then, like, I'm, like, singing. I'm, like, trying to write, like, because just off top, like, right. And um, uh, I, like, I'm si- I'm singing, and I see, like, a body walk by me. And I'm, like, ugh. Like, I get scared. I look over because I 
the way that Feldman studio is set up is like you have to walk through the vocal room to get to mm. the to the engineer room and shit and um or control room i sound like an idiot and um i get scared i look over and i realize it's travis and then i get scared again <laughs> was then, he wearing a beanie i don't remember what he was wearing did he bring courtney kardashian he didn't this is a little Courtney. bit before, right yeah. before. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was. Yeah. I don't know. Breaking <laughs> news. Breaking news. Um, so I get scared again. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck is up, legend? And I was like, yo, can we keep that? And it wasn't until recently that I was like, fuck. And it's like me and, and Travis like meeting. He's like, yo, what's up? And like we dab Oh, up. you have the audio of that. He was recording while I wow. like while I got scared. Because I was like, right. I was just like, had my eyes closed. I'm like, ah. And then, like, I could just kind of feel his legendary walk by. <laughs> that I, could, I could hear the door open. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, or something. And then maybe someone's talking outside or whatever. And he walks by, and I got scared. got scared again. And I was like, what's up, legend? And he's like, yo, what's up, dude? Like, we're, like, talking. He already knew and, who you were. Of um, course. I, I, if Feldman told him to come, then he probably had showed him my music before he came to the right, session. Right, So I'm sure, like, he had newly heard something um but uh yeah so he like pulled through and then he's we just said what's up and i was like yo we sh- can we keep that and then we kept it but i forgot like by the end of the album i forgot i was like yo where's that recording of like me and um, travis meeting i just thought it'd be a cool thing to have it'd be funny is it on the album no but it should have been but i think it's cool would have been a nice tiktok moment it would have been a nice intro or outro it would have been one of those classic, like, yo, yo, did I, I forget the melody? in the middle of it, too. And it's like, yo, is that Travis? Yeah. Okay, let's rework this album. Let's yeah. get that on there. No, but so you record with Feldman. It's your first time, like, really. We did those two songs. Yeah. And, and so then after you, that, someone we talked about, okay, let's make it work. Right. Yeah. And we made it work. Uh, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. I finagled the thing with your label and basically got th- them to front That's a, f- a funny word. A fair I amount not of the to money. Laugh at that word. Finagled. <laughs> I finagled it and I got them to front a fair amount of the money yeah. so it didn't come out of your pocket. So that made you feel okay. And then you recorded a whole album with them. Uh, yeah. Who's on the album? Uh, we have Do we cur- have any features? So this is the part where we switch into management. Yes. So oh, we'll do that part last. So first is little Aaron. Yeah, he's on Girl Next Door. Um, that song's already out. Go listen to it. And then we have. Um, is there only two features on the album? Oh, okay, Travis. But then also like Travis. <laughs> oh, Travis. Travis Barker. He's on two songs. Right. I feel like there's another vocal feature on the album. No, aside from her. Is it really just Chrissy? I thought there was more. Okay, I thought there was somebody else that I was forgetting. But Chrissy um, Costanza, she's in the band Against the Currents. Yes. She, um, there was a song I was singing, and I kind of just already sounded like super, super high. Like my vocals were like super high. And uh, I guess Brad had hit up uh, Lil' Aaron and he was like yo like is there like a female vocal like that you can think of that would like go good on this this song and aaron said he was like laying down he's like oh shit like fucking chrissy costanza so he like knew her manager gabe Mm -hmm. gabe supporta and um he like hit her hit him up about her and they show up as i met eleanor thank you eleanor for being in these beautifully signed pressed yeah test press shout out eleanor shout out eleanor and um he hit them up and so i that day i meet gabe eleanor and chrissy and we cut the song and then i would say maybe a few weeks later uh, then management switches over right so basically from when i started managing you in 2018 i was always like whenever someone bigger yeah. comes up, like seriously no worries but yeah so pretty much it was always like friends first client second yeah. it feels even weird saying the word client uh yeah, it does. and basically shit with my label was becoming a lot and also 
going yeah. very nicely. Yeah. And you went from not really doing much to all of a sudden doing a lot. And yeah. You needed more. I needed and attention. And I was a little bit sick of you. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> the whole thing with Feldman was just, I, it was like, seriously, I'm so glad that. It's always a matter my, of time before they get sick of me. My, like, if fingerprints are on this record, <laughs> I feel like I actually did real work. I Is collected it? my fucking management fee. That's that B. Yeah, I nice. I fucking collected my money and you I collected my yeah, money and you fucking called me one morning and uh -huh. you were like, bro, we need to talk and like I knew what you were gonna say. I knew and you knew it too. Of course. Yeah, I knew. You because knew also I feel like, again, I can't imagine anyone finds this interesting except for us. But we haven't talked in a little bit. It has to this be is documented. like we're like doing a therapy session right now. Uh, I feel like I might have missed one of your calls like a week ago or something. Like it it, it was like. Still? What do you mean? You said you feel like you're gonna miss my no, call. No, 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 oh. no, 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 dude, I do uh. not, I do not miss your call. <laughs> and my fucking, my fucking, my fucking you when I called girlfriend you, I, can attest to this. Do you remember when I would call? I called you one time, like I was on tour at Papa Roach, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh my and I was god, at you were <laughs> you were on tour with Papa Roach." I was like in Mammoth with my girlfriend's family, and it was like, whatever. I'm a manager; I have to pick up the phone, but. I knew you were fucked up and you were like, they won't give me the, oh, they were like, <laughs> I, they like, were I like, need you to deposit this. They were check. like, they were like, yo, they're paying me in a check and I need it in cash. I need it in cash app. And I'm like, I said, they I, won't yeah, cash. And I'm like, me. Hey man, <laughs> fucking Papa Roach doesn't have cash app. Can you just take the check? And you're like, yeah, but can you deposit it for me? Cause I don't have a bank account. You did not yeah, have a bank account. I'm we a, went to Wells no, Fargo I'm together. Still kind of a, um, and set up an account. Me and Eleanor <laughs> was walking up. What? Me and Eleanor had a conversation today about the fact that I don't have a credit card yet. You don't have a credit card? <laughs> no. You got to be building credit. So uh, I was with this chick the other day. I don't know if she'll still be around by the time this airs. Such an idiot. <laughs> she had a bunch of credit cards, and I was like, What do those things do? I was like, Looks like debt. And she's like, um, Not if you use them the right way. And I was like, mm, Well, <laughs> and then I was like, I don't have a credit card, and I need one like by tomorrow. Well, it's you, still going to be tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what time it is now. Yeah, you need It's actually I have 20 up minutes. Uh, to you, really? <laughs> Yeah, can I use your credit card? Yeah, no, we are past those days. You can use Eleanor's credit card. Have you uh, seen the picture of me at Emo Night? Mm, I'll send it to you. I've seen <laughs> some look photos at it. on Eleanor, story That's all I can think of. But uh, it was a very natural. We were going in a couple different directions. Yeah. And, we just uh, had to kiss it on the cheek. And, yeah, and, and it, was, it was actually a great point to... Uh, split because it was pretty much a couple songs have been added to the album since yeah, but you gotta hear it yeah you know it was like pretty much like I felt like the deal <laughs> was over with the label Sorry. or it was fucking fulfilled I did my thing on the uh -huh. last album you seem in a good place dude even some of the songs that you heard yeah like sound completely different fire <laughs> they're, no yeah they're, for real they sound like Remember when I was like, oh my God, I'm so worried about this song. Right, 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 right. Those songs, I'm like, I love them. Wow. Yeah, they sound like crazy. What I was saying before is, I think before you called me and we're like, yo, I met someone else. It's so funny to think about because it it's almost like we were breaking up in the relationship. We were. But I definitely like, I like missed one of your calls a week prior or like I was on vacation. I just like felt it was in the air and like I think we both it's, oh. it's very much like when you get to an end of a relationship and you're about uh -huh. to break up and like you know it's coming. Uh -huh. Like we just both felt it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're both doing fine. <laughs> Trust me, I'm fine, man. <laughs> no, but uh, it was fine. You're doing great though because yeah, this is sick. you're on fucking Spotify playlist covers and shit now. Yeah. Fucking um, we're doing that tour this you're Thursday. touring this podcast will come out uh next week which you all you will already oh, be on the road i'll be halfway through the road i think if that's halfway into the tour so the album's coming out in a couple days yes you're hitting the road on the 20th dude there's so much shit we didn't talk about but we're already an hour and 45 minutes and I now know. we can't possibly we cover gotta, we gotta just blast it in i'll tell you right now tour 
it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fucking, you also formed. Oh yeah, this is like uh, yeah. another. This is a whole other podcast. This is a, a whole other podcast, but it's just a classic. What it was like being Lil Lotus's manager was. Uh, I had so many projects. Lotus formed a screamo band, and the thing is, when you sign to a label, they're not just signing like Lil Lotus. They're signing you as the artist. So any side yeah. projects you do, they have the rights to. Because but they've duh, been cool about it. They've been super cool. They're so cool about it. But at first, you were like, I "I'm starting like, a screamo band." And then I had to call, and then I feel like we tried not saying anything. I had to call, oh God, so dumb. Had a few different phone calls. I got us in trouble a few times. Explaining (laughs) it away. Very quickly, we got to wrap this up. I got to go home and go to sleep. I never wrap it up. Uh, That's a fact. But you should. Uh, You should double bag. (laughs) Double bag. Ziploc bag. And uh, okay, so. I should just full body it. Yes. I'm surprised there's not photos of you with a condom over your head. It feels very on brand. I'm not surprised that there's no photos of me anywhere near you've never touched a condom i've before. never seen one. how do you not have more children i don't know <laughs> somewhere in this process you started a fucking screamo band i did and you're going on tour with them too yeah i'll be back for like two weeks and then go on tour for lotus be back for like two weeks and then um a little bit of rehearsals and then we head out for that and then there's a store that i'm super excited about but a store a tour. Oh, I said a tour. store. There's yeah. a tour that I'm super excited about with one of my homies. Um, hopefully, it actually happens. That I actually get to go. It's but, just, okay, just say the name and we will bleep it. I feel so uh, bad. It doesn't matter. So I'm just telling you now. This is uh, what happens when me and yeah. you are together. We just talk. All right. uh, but we should have hung out. Not before on a this, podcast. so we got all that out of our system, <laughs> and then we just talk about the stuff that uh, they want. Yeah. We should do another podcast, but I got to ask you some other questions. And okay. our marvelous, I will only Cam answer will what you ask. Weave it in, perfect. Okay. Uh, the tattoos. When did those start? All of my tattoos. No, in like, general. When did you get Face your first tattoo? tattoo? First tattoo. Um, I was like 15, 16. One of my friends had a machine, and then he was like he had tattooed some other homies and then i was like i want some so i just got like tattoos then and after that like i would lie about my age with a bunch of homies that were like working in shops they're like older and um they never made me sign anything Hmm. and then there was one day there's probably one day that like the owner of the shop was there and he was like we have to like you know do the whole thing because the owner's here I was like, dude, I'm only like 16, 17. I, was, I think I was only 16 or 17 at the time. And he's like, you have to leave right now. <laughs> he was like, like okay, I'll just walk out. out. And he's like, just come back like tomorrow. I'm like, he won't be here. And he like finished me up. But I was still so sore from it. Like, when was the first face tattoo? First face tattoo? I think I was like 20. Oh, okay. that I waited till then. Uh, to so get which the one was it? it? There's like a moon somewhere on one of the half, one of the sides. It's on somewhere. Oh, right, 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 there. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, the right there. Right there, right there, right yeah. there. Yeah. Um, the moon, that was my first one. And then after that, the other ones just kind of showed up. Do I remember when you got the artwork from the EP with Horse Head on your face? Yeah, I remember there was a group chat, and I was telling everybody, should I get the little one or the big one? Everyone said little one. I said, okay. And sounds you got like the big a, one. Sounds like a no. Yes, to me. Uh, when I got the, yeah, the yeah, big one, not yes one. Um, Do you regret any of your tattoos? No. There's not the only one ones... single tattoo on your body that you say. You oh, know what? yeah. Wait, actually, yeah. I, I want to fully black out my arms because I just don't like traditional tattoos anymore. But I don't regret getting them. I don't. You have I just the like other my... arm currently blacked out. Yeah, this one's blacked out. The forearm is blacked out. But uh, I wanted. Would you go like tattoo removal or just blacked out no blackout because i want to okay. do like white stuff over it but i really just like full blackout tattoos like i just i think the black work is super sick but i i also just really don't like my traditional tattoos anymore um but yeah but i don't regret them i i like if i regretted them i would do like, you regret tattooing ex-girlfriend's names on your body never no no even if I get them covered up, I just get them covered up because they got theirs covered up. And it looks I don't dumb think if I don't get you should get them up. covered up. I think you should just put like a like a light line through it, so it's like almost like a joke, and it's like a checklist. I should have wrote like heart ha ha or something. Yeah, like like, like whoops, lol. Like to say <laughs> like, whoops, lol. That was funny. Uh-uh. But yeah. that whole neck tattoo is a cover up of something. 
Yeah, that's the one that was on the la- that other video that we had to remove because I was too fucked up. That was a good video. I remember it. It, it like really it was, was, and it nuts. and it had like fifty thousand or seventy five thousand views or something. It was. I was fucked. Is there is like there anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Um, did like I gloss over some important stuff? Um, I'll just say things. Oh wait, way. wait, real quick. Here's how we will wrap this up. So. You're about to put out your second LP. Yes. You're in a better place. Yeah. Uh, and you live in Los Angeles again yes. with Lil Aaron and Smart Death? Yeah, we, we got a house out there. And um, uh, they're actually doing like construction on a big-ass studio in the house right wow. now. So it's like going to be super sick. Who's um, your favorite roommate and why is it Smart Death? You <laughs> I was like, you really watched the, their tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Smart Death, we, we're right next door to each other. And, How do you uh, guys not have a reality TV show? I don't know, but I found a security camera in the house that doesn't work, and I, we thought it would be really fun to put in the bathroom so people think that it is a reality mm-hmm. TV show or just creepy. Yes, but probably it's, creepy. It's like a fake camera. Yeah, fake. Um, I think that's okay to put in there, but it's, I'm sure there's much weirder stuff in that house than that. There's a lot of weird stuff. What's in that like house? a typical day in the fucking low iron smart death? Um, what this house look like i'm either i either have a friend over and it's really loud and we're like watching ridiculousness on like a hundred volume and Aaron, and mike is like turn it down and then aaron's coming in from on the rocks like he lives there he does it's a bar above the roxy which is a music yeah venue in he's Los coming Angeles. in from on the rocks at like 2 a.m with a bunch of the homies I end up downstairs. We stay up till six in the morning. There's a neighbor diagonal from us in the back that we're pretty sure it owns like a lion or tiger or something because they have this huge ass fucking steel cage and it's got like this weird ass big you can't see through it tarp thing and all you hear is like wow 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 Tiger wow. King lives like, in your back. Crazy garden. shit. Yeah. And um they feed it at night. We play beer pong until i don't know how long sometimes it becomes just me and aaron staying up all night and then we crash wolf john comes in from riding his bm his bike so um, it's so sick because it's not a bmx bike. We're it's a all, huge it's a huge it's rides. a the no no gear one uh-huh. free gear uh-huh. whatever what do you call it and then jackie boy's just in his room making pop punk beats and it's just like everybody's like <laughs> But then we all have like our little sober streaks where we just like hang out and we're just like doing random shit and we'll all watch like uh, Dave ridiculousness and ridiculousness. Did, did you watch the yes? I cried. Finale? You cried. I cried. What's your favorite part about me and why? Um, your hair. Yes, dude. I was gonna say the same thing. Your hair. That's, really? That's literally the only thing. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you like a brother. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> Dude, we've seen some fucked up shit together. Yeah, dude, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Uh, you fucking everything I hoped and wished for you is happening. Big same. Uh, yeah, dude, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. I love you. Oh, yeah, I'm so happy you for you. You're you're going to be on the road. You're dropping this yes. album. Signed copies getting framed in my office. And we're going to do a part two and three eventually. Yeah. Uh now that we got the pee pee poo poo out of the way. Yes. We flushed it down. We did. Fire. <laughs>